Welcome back to Italy, guys. Always a pleasure to have you in our country. And you're here to present your new record, which is coming out next Halloween 2012, um, which is the Manticore and Other Horrors. Um, you promised it to be harder, darker, faster, back to our roots. Did you keep your promise? Uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think it's definitely it's got elements of... Um, of what you term as our roots, definitely. There's um, a, a lot more of the hardcore type, punky, styly, fun uh, funky, <laughs> uh, fast riffs. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of uh, sort of the new wave of British heavy metal feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's got a very live, analogy type feel. Yes. Um, yeah, so I think, so. well, I definitely think so. No, oh, okay, I was the next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's heavy riffs and there's also a mighty orchestration in the record, almost a symphonic approach sometimes. Um, Midnight in the Labyrinth, which um, features old song revisited with an orchestra, was maybe the first step toward um, the evolution that brought you to record this record, in a sense. We can um, consider both projects well, connected. Well, no, because it, I, I don't think so, because um, that was conceived maybe three years ago. Okay. And the only reason, it was a fan-based thing. I think it was only 15,000 copies actually made, and they've okay. all gone. And um, when it was conceived, it was, it was a fan-only thing, and it was like an experiment. It was a great experiment, but it wasn't, it wasn't part of a chain of events. Yes. Um, and it's sort of blown the cobwebs out a little bit, but I don't think it has any relation really to this record. This record isn't like Midnight in the Labyrinth with mu uh, you know, with um, guitars and drums, etc. Traditional yes. Cradle of Feel Fair put on top of it. I think this, this album is its own entity. Okay. Um, through the years, um, the screaming singing that was uh, the main thing in the early days um, left the scene to the value of the, the lyrics um, mm -hmm. more than ever this time, in my opinion. Um, the lyrics of Cradle of Field uh, are definitely designed to make you think. We can consider this a sort of evolution again, and uh, was this a natural process, uh, or, I mean, a proper choice no, no, yeah, yeah. So, and so, for this a, record in particular? Yeah, well, the first record, I think this harks a lot back to our first album, The Principle of Evil May Flesh, um, and that album wasn't um, full of screaming or whatever. I think we just matured as a band, and I hate using that word because it always makes you think of, like, you know, getting too old and not. But this album is extreme, there's no getting away from that. But I just want um, I want people to sing along with it. And you yeah. can't really sing along with something that's that's just sounding like a cat being strangled. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, of course, you're a, a strangled cat. So, in that respect, I think... I mean, it is extreme. It is, you know, don't, I don't want anybody thinking it's, you know, it's like the human league or anything. Okay. Um, it's definitely got no pop, pop sensibilities. But the songs are catchy. Um, and like I say, these elements have come into it as well. I think uh, as much of our past as, as, as the present as well. So I think it's a good marriage of, of, of different styles. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a Cradle of Filth record. I think it's just going to surprise a lot of people just because of the, the sound quality, the, the, the way it's been put together. Um, it's definitely got a live feel to it. Yeah, it's, it's got a, a sort of analogue almost, mm -hmm. you know, sort of... Uh, um, you listen to it and you sort of think... Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that's for me, almost familiar to me in a, in a kind of retro style, I suppose. Yeah. You have certainly uh, established your own unique writing style, um, especially if um, this question is for you, Danny. Uh, do you still credit Byron as a major influence to your sound and your style? I guess so, yeah. I mean, that was the, the stuff I grew up on that I enjoyed reading, but I think this... Like I say, this album's its own entity. I think it's this album, it's our 10th studio album. And I think it's been born out of being in a band now for 18 years. Um, and this is where we've arrived at. And I don't think, because people say, well, what, you know, what, what influences made this record? And I say, well, there, there was nothing in the past year that went, wow, that's, that's life changing. We must write an album yeah. about that one subject or that one film or that one book. I think it's just like a, you know, 
hundreds of little things that have been influential that have all built up to a bigger picture. So you mean that you're putting all yourself inside uh, your music? That's what you mean? And well, yeah, this record in I mean, yeah, this, this album is 101% yeah. Cradle of Filth. And female vocals in the songs who come to this uh, are by Lucy Atkins or there's a new Cradle of Filth lady singer? <laughs> no, no, it's Lucy Atkins, okay. yeah, although it's in a different kind of... St uh, she's like the, the main voice by, uh, on top of a choir. Yeah. But yeah, she, it's not just the only song she's on, she's on a few tracks. Okay. And will she tour with you? No, no. no. Our, our current keyboardist does the female vocals. Okay, so okay. That's Complicated, I know, but. <laughs> uh, so each and every song on this new record deals with a different creature. Um, you now seem to privilege an horror vein instead of a vampire gothic theme. Uh, how did you choose uh, the featured creatures? And was that a long process? How did the idea came about? I, well, actually, no. There are there, there are uh, vampiric um, mm. and uh, lycanthropic sort of influences. It's not about when I said there's a theme running throughout it. I think people are taking it too literally when I said monsters because monsters. Okay, the manticore is uh, emblematic of of being a mythological beast. Yes, but um, the the songs are about. All kinds of things, from metaphysical horrors to fictional horror to you know personal personal horror, you know like triumph over tragedy and personal demons and things like that. So the term monster, you know, may be misconstrued a little bit. And do you guys have a personal demon yourself? Yeah, that's it, me. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> okay. And among all creatures presented in the record, which one is the most scary, the most th terrifying for you? Me. <laughs> Yo! Okay. Yeah, that's the answer for the rest of these questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me, let me just take the last one in this uh, matter. Among other horrors, uh, if you had to include a real political figure or a show business character, who would you pick and why to add them into the record? I mean, in the contemporary world. In a contemporary world, with someone living, yeah, <laughs> someone living as a monster, <laughs> yeah. that'd be Putin, wouldn't it? But would I get arrested for that. <laughs> okay, if I said that, wouldn't I? No, I don't think so. But you like never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't visit Russia soon. So you'll be playing Italy for two shows on 26th and 27th November 2012 in Bologna and Milano yeah. with Godseed, Rotting Christ, and the Italian band Darkened. Uh, how this interesting bill came about. And is this just for Italy, or will be the no, no? It's well, it's it's for the. I mean, it's quite an extensive European tour. I mean, it starts in Holland, yeah. and then goes through Germany, up through Scandinavia, Belarus, Ukraine, and comes back Mediterranean. And you know, I mean, it encapsulates most of Europe. Um, but the bill came together by the promoter, um, and obviously we had a say in it. Godseed, a great band. Obviously, it's uh, Tom and uh, sorry, King and Gull from uh, former Gorgoroff. Uh, Rotten Christ has been, a, you know, last two records have been fantastic. So I think it's a really strong bill. I don't know Darkened, and there's another band, Blind, but they sort of flip-flop amongst other, you okay. know, because they play in some territories and the other band plays in another. But I think it's a really strong bill. We're going to have a really amazing live show this time round. Um, and we haven't toured Europe for, you know, we've done a lot of summer festivals, but um, that sort of prevented us from doing full European tours, so we've concentrated a lot on places like South America and North America and Canada. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, are you working, or do you have, I mean, an idea of how the show will be this time, since, you know, the visual thing has always been mm. a main thing for Cradle well, we're working. and this time this album is visual itself. So. Yes, yeah, well, we're working on that at the present. We've got um, our, the people that work at the, the live sound, like stage crew and stuff, a bit busy building stuff, and when we... We've got a video to shoot at the end of this week, which okay. is, uh, we're sort of in Europe for the rest of this week, and we've got a video of the weekend, which is like a three-day thing. Mm. Although the band's only there for a, for a day, and then it's sort of the storyboarding. Okay. You know, the, the, the main story is being filmed over the next two days. And then we'll, after that, then our tension's just going to, you know, we have other press to do, but the main tension is going to be toward preparing for the mm. tour and getting our shit together for, you know, for the live, the, the presentation probably going to use film projections and um yeah we've got we've got our tour manager's got involved uh, another visual artist 
yeah. for the uh, projections this time and he's apparently he's coming up with something which is like a little bit nastier mm -hmm. this time he's going to put forward and it's going to be a little bit more abstract and stuff mm -hmm. which is going to be more in keeping with like the the newer album you always had a very loyal fan base, uh, which has grown a lot through the years with you, we can say. Um, do you keep in mind that you have to satisfy their taste, their expectations uh, for each album, or freedom of expression is always the key word for Credor Field? Yeah, I think there's a degree of, yeah, I mean, we obviously primarily write for ourselves, but we do have one eye cast firmly on our fans and they can be quite fickle and what I mean by that is that um, they seem to have a taste of their own you know they're never satisfied a lot of them <laughs> but I think this album really will uh, what we've garnered from the press we've done and some personalities in the press world that we've known for a long while that they're kind of trustworthy as to their opinions they love it um, but obviously the, the real uh, test of the matter is when you know, for example, when the video comes out for the track Frost on a Pillow, and there's also um, another track will be, be, if people go to our website, which is theorderofthedragon.com, or just put in Cradle of you'll find it eventually. Um, there's going to be a, a track to download in the next week or two. Um, and I think the main test of time is, is when the album comes out, but I think people are going to love it. Okay, what did you pick Frost on her pillow? For, well, the as a, as for the video, I mean. As well, it's a, a record company decision, but I, I okay. totally agree with it because we love we love each and every track like our own children, <laughs> and um, it's it's an obvious choice because it is very catchy. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's still Cradle of Filth. We're not talking Lady Gaga. It's it's it's, and it's the running time's pretty much perfect. I think it's just just comes in over four minutes. So. Um, in the contemporary music scene, is there any band or artist that you respect the most? Not just talking about metal, but the whole uh, scene. Uh, is there any artist that you love in particular that um, is making an interesting uh, growing as Cradle Field is doing through the years? Um, not as such, because these are these are the people we like. Uh, you know, I mean. If you take people like Lemmy and you know I'm, I'm more into people like you know I Classic. admire people like Johnny Depp and that but we are not talking about music here yeah. are we um, yeah but I wouldn't say someone like Lemmy is 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 growing you know because you, you know what you're gonna get with a Motorhead album sure. aren't you they're pretty you know the next Motorhead album's not gonna be too stray too far from the previous one um, no, not not as such, really. We're just fans. We, I think, we're more fanboys of older material, like the Maidens and the Priests. And, yes, true. And what the have classics. You. <laughs> the, the classic example, <laughs> things that we've grown up with. Yeah. I mean, there's not really anything, to be honest, around which is new. Mm. I mean, I was having this conversation with a journalist earlier today, and he agreed with me. There's nothing real which is absolutely amazingly new that makes you go, "Fuck yes, this is amazing." Not like what the old, old classic stuff used to do to you, like when you was younger, you know. Um, so yeah, hence the reason it's, I'm afraid it's going to have to be the classic stuff all over again. And is there, in the metal scene, is there any new band uh, which you see like the same excitement, some of yourself in the early days, uh, uh, in their approach and style? Is there any band that, no? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, there probably is, yes, but I just haven't been privy to it. I mean, I like Ghost. Ghost are okay. kind of a new band, but sure. not really because they're, they're all members of other bands yeah. that you know, a great deal not as old as us and have, have been doing it for as long as us. So, theoretically, they're not particularly new and their sound is a kind of based on a lot of um, older bands as well, you know, like Merciful Fate, for example. But yeah, I mean, I, I like the style. I like the fact that it is very retro, okay. but with a modern twist. And why everybody, after viewing this interview, should go out and buy the Manticore and other artists? Because we told them to. <laughs> <laughs> and we know where they live. It's a menace. <laughs> we know where they live and we're going to come around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, is this a record that you consider one of the best that the band did so yeah, far? Definitely, mm. Definitely, mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think people are going to be very surprised by it. 
And is this the direction that we can expect from now on? I mean, this well, kind it's, of project. It's a direction for now. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, each album with us is always different. Mm -hmm. So you can't say what the next one's going to be like. Sure. You know, so hence we will do this, we'll tour this as much as we possibly can to promote it and, you know, interviews, etc. And see, see where it takes it from there, really. How did you work this time? You had my, very, a lot of material and then you picked the best or you concentrated on uh, certain songs and working hard no, on No, we concentrated on every, every track. Mm. I mean, uh, on, on the day of release, there's two versions, which they always do. I don't know why, but it's uh, uh, like a Digipat version with two extra tracks. And the, the reason they're on there is just because we wanted an album that wasn't too long or too short. Okay. So we settled for 11 tracks with two extras. So we wrote 13 in total. I'm lucky for some, um, but yeah, they all. They, we generally don't write like twenty tracks and, and pick the the best. We 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 work consistently on the tracks that you know that we have and make sure that they all come up to to scratch. That, that they are worked on to the point that they are classics. Mm. And do you consider this album a chapter of uh, your story and um, the songs will mix perfectly with the classics on the tour? I mean, in well, the I tour, in the yes, set? Yeah, definitely. Or and I will think you dedicate like a section to the new stuff and then... No, they'll be mixed in. They'll okay. be mixed in and I think in, in years to come some of these tracks will, you know, uh, will definitely become part of that classic roster. Okay. So you said that all the songs are your children and that, that you love them all. But I'm Bastard sure, offspring, I said. But I'm know. sure that each of you has a favorite one uh, or maybe two songs. I actually like all of them, to be honest. <laughs> really? You don't yeah. want to pick like no, a couple? Listen, there is, no, uh, no all, of them, <laughs> see, all of them have got like a certain vibe. Each one's got its own vibe. You know, not one's the same as the other one. Okay, let's turn the question like this. Is there any song where you expressed yourself the best on this record? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say... That you're very proud I, of, you I, know, I, when I, you I, listen to it. I would go for Manticore, because it is the, literally the title track. Yeah. And henceforth, why the album title came from that. It's, if you took, like, an Edgar Allan Poe, you know, storybook, it would be something like The Raven yeah. and Other Stories. So it's The Manticore and Other Stories. And because of the t being practically the title track I would just go for that because if somebody had to pick one I would just say well you know that's that's an example of the rest of the record okay. you know I know you love Italy very much and Italy loves you as being one of the countries that really made you big first um, so what can you say about us I mean do you want to leave a special message for the Italian fans well I just hope everybody you know comes out to see us play live we're playing Genoa and we're playing here at the Alcatraz. Yeah. And um, I think people are really going to dig the record, so you need to give it a chance, mm. you know, go out and buy it, and I think they will not be disappointed. But other than that, just thanks for all the support. It's been amazing, absolutely. And I, how do you imagine yourself in 20 years by now? <laughs> Dead. <Yeah. laughs> no, please. <laughs> well, I can't help it. <laughs> Grim Reaper turns up at my door. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank and you. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you.